I wanted to take a minute and uh, do a quick video to show you how easy it is to post results for your race on run sign up um, that uh, have things automatically calculated like age percentage and race as well as uh, linking to a YouTube video for uh, finish line. So um, in run sign up you'll go to results and an upload results page. This is a set of results that's already been uploaded that, that we see. I'm going to go through the steps to show you how this was done. Um, upload a new set of results. You pick the event. Picking the event automatically calculates the distance because you've set up the distance for the event. And I uh, will just call this a test. You can enter in an email um, where you want uh, participants to uh, to send uh, questions to. It could be your timer's email or your race email. And then you choose a CSV file. A CSV file is something that you can get from your timer typically. And obviously timers can do this as well. Here is an example spreadsheet file that we were sent for, um, for this race. It includes bib number, uh, division, which we ignored actually in, in this case, um, time, um, uh, first name, last name, age, sex, uh, city, and state. So pretty simple. And so we just uh, choose that file. And it actually included some other columns in it that I had hidden. Um, so we choose that file. And the system uploads it. Now, what happens is that the top line here is um, what's coming in from this spreadsheet. So you see that... Uh, bib number um, was what was uh, the spreadsheet uh, input was. So we're going to match that to the run sign up results display header of bib. For division, we're not going to use that. Um, for finish time of day, um, we're actually not going to use that either. Uh, time is actually going to be um, related to clock time which will be important for calculating the uh, um, information um, for uh, age group um, grading as well as uh, pace. Um, and we'll take off these other uh, columns that were in the uh, import. And let's uh, automatically set the finishing places because we had it all in order. Um, and these are not related to the people in the, in the registration side. So they did not match on registration ID or bib or chip. So it was just kind of separate systems. It's nicer if you can merge them together and match users. But in this case, we won't. But that's no big deal. You can set the header now. And this allows you to see that you know, you've got things kind of in the right order. And then you can simply save the results. Once you save the results, then things are laid out uh, kind of like this. Um, note that you can uh, change the way things look. So I can move the pace over here. I can drag and drop columns like that. And I can also edit what appears and what does not appear. So like I've hidden the uh, country as an example. Um, we'll save those columns. Now. I've got this video here. Now, what does that do? Well, if I click on the video, it will actually pop right to that part of the video. You see, here's the uh, finishing time. They're coming across the line there. And so every result in this uh, set of results, so I can go up to like the 2000s, and, um, and I can see that there's video times for all of these as well. How did I do that? Well. Um, once I was, uh, I, I had uploaded my data, I then went into video settings. And uh, the timer had a simple, um, a simple uh, GoPro camera set up at the finish line. And he uploaded the, um, that video to YouTube when he was finished. So you go to YouTube and you look for um, this piece right there. And uh, you enter that into um, the video, uh, YouTube video ID. And then you say the offset, so five seconds. So basically, if someone's coming across the line at 20 minutes, 
you want to start at 19 minutes and 55 seconds so they can see themselves coming up to the line and so forth. And then you enter your clock times of when the start of the video is showing um, or, or when, when the first person comes across. And then you set the offset. So in this video, it was 14 seconds until the first person came across at 106.23. And so what this does, it allows us to calculate where exactly to start the video. So it starts the video five seconds before 106.23 on the clock time. Um, and that actually gets put 14 seconds into the video. Now, this, uh, this particular video had a problem in that the um, battery wore out on the, uh, on the video camera. So it took them about four minutes and 20 seconds to replace it. So uh, the first segment of the video lasted from 106.23 to 256.06 in terms of the times. And then there was a gap and it went from 3 hours and 26 until the end. Um, and that gap started at 1 hour 49 minutes and 54 seconds into the video. So uh, this way you're able to, to sync everything everything up. So if we go back to those results and you know we go down a, a few here um, we'll come into the area where there are no video results because these people were in the gap. But if we go down a little bit further um, you'll see that the video um, starts again. So note how this goes automatically to the 301 you know 15 area um, so you can see people coming across at the, uh, at the right time. Um, so, uh, so that's it. Um, hopefully this uh, helps you uh, get over any fears you may have of setting up uh, results for your race. Thanks.